What do the founder of JetBlue Airways, the CEO of Dell, the former CEO of New York's Madison Square Garden, the CEO of the accounting firm Deloitte and Touche, and the CFO of American Express have in common? They are all Mormons, and they have reached the pinnacle of the business world while staying true to their religion. These executives' unusual road to success and the personal habits they follow while at the helm of some of America's most respected companies is the subject of a new book, The Mormon Way of Doing Business, Leadership and Success Through Faith and Family. What I liked about these men is they don't wear the religion on their sleeve. You might not ever know that they're Mormon in the business setting, but one thing you know is they've got a set of principles and they live by them. And they don't really make exceptions uh, to those rules because business is business. There's no question in my mind, none, no question in my mind. I wouldn't have the position that I now have had it not been for much of the training that I obtained in an ecclesiastical setting. I often say that if it wasn't for the two years I spent in, in Brazil on my mission, um, I, would, I would not be the CEO of JetBlue today. I am proud to announce Real Salt Lake. That message is echoed by all of these business leaders. Dave Chekets says his training in the church prepared him for two years of rejection and adversity in his quest to acquire New York's Radio City Music Hall. Those kind of experiences just, uh, just give you this sense of perseverance and faith in, in what you're doing and in yourself. And, and uh, my career has been one just built on uh, perseverance all the time. We have a lot of titles in lives. Uh, right now I happen to be a CEO. Before that I was a president and a COO. and Before that a vice chairman and then a consultant. So there's been many titles I've had. Uh, and even in the church have been various, uh, various titles have applied to me when I've had various callings. Those all come and go and they're transient. But there's a number of titles that don't come and go. And one is uh, uh, either being a follower or a disciple of uh, someone. And, and the second one would be that uh, title of father or husband. For me those are permanent and those stick with you for a long time and so therefore your dedication to those titles and what they mean in their fullest should be the largest and the number one priority in your life. I always ask my question, you know, how much is, is too much? I'm very cognizant of the fact that if I um, you know, have this money and I you know, just give it to all my children and I'm worried about really messing up a whole generation of Neelamans and you know, I, I don't really. I want my kids to be able to have successes like like I had. So I think this, the whole perspective thing, and you know, is, is there a greater plan? Is there a greater glory? <clears throat> um, are the riches of this world the most important thing in your life, or is there some bigger purpose? 9/11, more than any other experience in their business careers, required these executives to draw on their faith and exhibit leadership. In a matter of about a half hour. Everything that I thought about as regards to my work life and the security of my family changed. And I've taken that lesson with me, that within a half hour or within 15 minutes, all the assumptions that you have about the future can change. And so that means that the way you think about your family, the relationship that you have with your wife, the enjoyment that you have with your colleagues, the time that you spend in those aspects of life that truly bring you satisfaction and happiness are things that are just real important to take advantage of. Well, you just know that you don't walk through life alone. And and you just find strength and inner strength from other sources that supports, that encourages, that moves you forward that I'm not convinced that I'll enjoy. It's not absent from everyone, but not everyone has that same faith, that same conviction, and that same sure knowledge that you don't walk through life alone, and that no obstacle is bigger than you are when you think of yourself in that much broader circle. I don't think uh, the world would necessarily be a better place if Mormons ran everything. Uh, I really don't. I think what's important is to have people run things who are principled, uh, who have a set of ethics and who are anchored to those beliefs and ethics. It doesn't matter if you are uh, brought up Jewish or Catholic or Muslim or Mormon. What matters is that you take those values and you actually apply them when you leave the chapel. 
uh, or the temple, that you, you bring those values to work. They're not just something you check off on Sunday. And, and I think that would make business uh, in the rest of the world a lot better. Mm -hmm.